Hey, what's up, everybody? In this next episode, we have a special guest, Guy Humphrey, and we're going to be talking about this huge street fight that uh, we all got into in uh, Seattle, in downtown Seattle. So don't miss this. It's a super interesting episode. Right on. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Yamato Damashi podcast. My name is James, and today, myself and Ensign are joined by a very special guest in Ensign's old school friend from way back in the day, Guy. Guy, how are you doing today? Good, good. How are you guys doing? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Yeah, back, so, just, a, just a short background on Guy. He, uh, we used to play racquetball together. He was a pro racquetball player when we were always playing pros. So we pretty much toured together. There was a point in time in our life where we actually lived together. Mm-hmm. We lived in Texas in an apartment. This is one of our classmates, Carl Suka. So, and and we had, man, I mean, we could probably do numerous podcasts together. We had yeah. some crazy adventures, man. I mean, with yeah. girls, with fights, with brawls in Houston. I mean, there's like some crazy shit, but. Yeah, that's like the brawl in Houston. Come that was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, the one thing right I always say, you know, every anytime we ever get together, we always have fun. And you know, it's like I if I don't see him for twenty years, it's like, you know, we get together and it's like I just saw him last week, you know. Yeah. So it's it's just a it's just a it's a it's a special friendship, especially to me. So you know. Yeah, yeah it's that's how you know we had a real good friendship. No matter how long we're apart and how long we don't see each other. I mean, I see him on the monitor and I was like it's like fucking yesterday we're traveling on the pro tour. Right. Yeah. Yeah, last time I saw you was what, like uh, UFC forty eight? Yeah. I think. Whoa. So that's some time ago. I know that. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta we gotta make a we gotta make a trip together again sometime yeah. soon, man. Yeah. So where are you based, guy? Where are you? Uh, I'm in Kansas City. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So that's right fine. in the, right in the middle. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the you know this story that we're gonna go over it was uh, one where Ensign absolutely saved my life, uh, <laughs> but that's not the only time he saved my life. He actually saved my life another time. I mean, oh, really? and actually, not like, you know, people say, oh, yeah, you know, you saved my life. It's like, no, this he saved my life twice. I we mean, can I talk do. about that one, too, because I don't remember. Yeah. So maybe after this, this one, we can go over that one, too. Yeah, we, yeah, we can we got, touch we on that one. Line, yeah? That wasn't, yeah. that didn't involve a fight, though. So. Okay. Oh, okay. You, you don't remember at all? You don't remember? I probably do, but I don't remember exactly the incident. But once you mention it, I'll probably remember. Yeah, you will. <laughs> you absolutely will. Okay. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah. wicked. So, obviously, the you know the name of the the episode of this podcast is Street Fight in Seattle. So yeah. that kind of gives yeah. a hint to everyone, sort of where where it's taking place. But give me a bit of context. Like, what what were you guys doing in Seattle? Go, go. You talk. Okay. Okay. So we were there at, for a pro national racquetball tournament, uh, which they usually had in Seattle. I think every year for several years in a row, <coughs> and. Um, so I think it was either Friday or Saturday night. For some reason, I think it was Friday night. Um, you know, we all were out, you know, Egan, Ensign, myself, were out on the town, um, which by Friday, it wasn't unusual for Ensign and I to be out of the tournament. But for Egan, you know, usually, <laughs> you know yeah, usually he was, you know, he was still winning. You know, he was quarters were on fr uh, Fridays, semis were on Saturdays usually. So um, I'm not even sure why he was with us, to be honest. So. Uh, unless either he was either played earlier in the day or he was out of the tournament. So, uh, you know, we were out on the town wanting to find a nightclub, basically. Mm -hmm. So, but we were there for the, for the racquetball tournament. And it is a little confusing why he was with us. So, because I figure usually, usually he goes pretty deep in those tournaments. Mm -hmm. So, um, so basically how the story starts out is, you know, we're, we're driving around trying to look for a nightclub. We don't really know Seattle that well. So we're just kind of, kind of going around in C Seattle in the evening was weird because it seemed kind of dead from what I remember. Um, so we come up to this stoplight and uh, there's a car that pulls up right next to us, which is, has uh, two or three girls in there. So I'm like, you know, roll down the window. You say, Hey, you know, we're from out of town. We're looking for a nightclub. You know, you guys know of any place. And they actually said, yeah, we're going to one. Why don't you just follow us? I was like, okay, you know, I got girls talking to me. I'm, I'm on it, you know? So, <laughs> so. <Hold on. laughs> So I probably just get a little, little blindsided and, you know, so they start pulling out. So I guess I'm going into the story already. 
But so they start pulling out and I kind of like try to scoot in right behind them, you know, so I can follow them. So next thing I know, we get rammed on the, the front left side of the car. Okay. So and it was pretty good. It was a pretty good smack. It, you know, it wasn't like totaling the car or anything like that, but you know, so we had an accident, you know, mm -hmm. and it was one of those weird streets where it was like four lanes, but you know, two kind of went that way and two went the other way. So, you know, I didn't know where I was, I was at, I was, I was following girls. So it didn't really matter where I was, you know, at the time. <laughs> so, so he had his girl like, goggles on. What's that? Yeah. Girl you had goggles. your girl goggles on, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I like to think I'm a little smarter with them, but probably I'm sure I'm not. <laughs> but, but anyway, so I, you know, we, we get into a wreck. We, you know, we get out of the car and we're looking at him. I'm looking at the sign. It's like, no, we had the right way to go this way. This guy cut over into our lanes. So, you know, it's a little bit of confusion of, of where the lanes went. So this, this big dude, big black guy gets out of the car and he starts just acting just like crazy, all pissed off. And he's like, yeah, you just fucking ran into me. Swearing's okay on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Go for okay, it. Okay. Cause yeah. This, this is <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so yeah, he's like, you know, you, you fucking ran into me and you know, I had the right of way and this and that. And I'm like, no, look at the sign. Sign says, you know, I can go this way, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we kind of all get out of the car and, you know, kind of go off to the side and, um, you know, we're trying to figure out, you know, who's at fault or who's not at fault. And, you know, Egan's looking at the sign and he's like, oh, you know, it's like, yeah, it does look like it goes that way. And it's like, I think it's our fault. And this guy, I don't know, this guy was, I don't know if he was on drugs or something, but he was just super aggressive from the get go. And he was just ampy, just like just jittery and just crazy, just just wanting to fight from the get go. So, in, you know, yeah, when I was the driver, fucker too. yeah, he was big. Was this huge. is, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll tell you, I, I, he was probably about six, four. And if he was 280 pounds, I would not wow. doubt it. Realistically, yeah. probably at least 250 to 260. Mm -hmm. This guy was like, his traps he was a huge. bodybuilder because first of all, you know, yeah. he's a typical bodybuilder. He had a, a t-shirt that was three sizes too small for him. You know, his back was just like this, this big carrot that just came down to a V. <laughs> This guy was, a, he was a monster. I mean, he was huge. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he saw me, of course, back then I was probably about, you know, on a good day, I was 145 pounds. Okay. So, you know, he could have been <laughs> yeah. my guy, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm pretty sure he felt pretty confident, you know, stepping up to me and, you know, giving all kinds of shit, which, you know, after looking at it, you know, I, I can kind of understand, but you know, when you get in an accident, you try to try to be civil about it, but this guy wasn't mm -hmm. civil from the get go. So we all kind of go over to the side and we're kind of just, you know, trying to figure out what's going on, getting our bearings. And so this guy just starts, yeah, you, you fucker, you know, you, you, you ran into me, you wrecked my car, which I don't understand because the guy was like in a ghetto cruiser. I mean, he was a hunk of junk. So I don't know what he was all worried about yeah. his car, you know? So, you know, Egan's looking at the sign, like I said, and he, you know, he's going to go over and, and call the cops and this guy's, you know, just starting to rail on me. He's like, yeah, you piece of shit. Fuck you, blah, blah, blah. You know, and Ensign's cool. I mean, Ensign did great because he was doing everything he could to deescalate the situation. Because, you know, he's a physical guy. He knows when things can get out of, out of hand real fast, you know. So he's just like, hey, man, everything's cool. You know, my brother's going to call the cops. We'll just do a report. Everything's going to be fine. You know, so no big deal. But this guy wasn't having any of it. He was just hyper aggressive, just hyper aggressive. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so and it's like Ensign and I are looking at the thing. It's like, yeah, I think it is, you know, it does kind of look like it's your fault or, you know, our fault or whatever, because it does look like, you know, these lanes go this way. And this guy's like, yeah, I'm a fucking cab driver. So I know and you're, you you know, you fucked up and, you know, he said something about, you know, you fucking asshole. And Ensign's just like, hey, now, you know, dude, you know, just puts his, he literally puts his hand in between us. And he's like, hey, man, you know, everything's going to be cool. You know, we're getting the cops, you know, just don't call anybody fucking asshole, you know. So and it's something you would see right in a movie. So yeah. this guy, like I said, he's six, four. So he steps up to Ensign and kind of gives him a little, little, you know, nudge mm -hmm. like he's going to, you know, not attack him, but he's trying to push his weight around. So he's looking down. I mean, he's literally looking down at Ensign and I can remember a picture. He's like this and Ensign's looking up at him and this guy says, yeah, well, what the fuck are you going to do about it? <laughs> yeah. That's so, all you remember. I mean, he may as well just slap Ensign in the face at that point, you know? So mm -hmm. Ensign looks up at him and says, you want to see what the fuck I'm going to do? And literally in a nanosecond, Anson literally jumped off of both his feet. He's in the air, 
takes his right <laughs> arm and wraps it around this guy's neck and flips this guy on the ground. I mean, it's the, probably it's the best flip I've ever seen ever, ever. <laughs> the only thing that came close that I've ever seen that actually kind of reminded me of that was I think it was uh, I think it was a pride fight where Rampage Jackson was fighting fighting Arona. Arona, yeah, where he Somebody, slammed him. He had him in an R bar yeah. and he couldn't get out. Yeah. He just couldn't get to do anything. So he picked him up and just slammed him. Right, yeah, yeah. That the, that one? That's the only thing that that uh, that ever kind of compared to it as far but, as impressiveness, as far as the flip goes. Ensign, this was like before your pro career, right? This was like three months into jujitsu as well, right? So Yeah, yeah it, was, it was definitely early on. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I used to go to Hawaii and train with those guys a lot. And I used to just, you know, I was doing a little bit of jujitsu. You know, so but not no, much. The funny I I... thing is, is prior to going out that night, we were in my in our me and Egan's room, and we moved the beds on the side, and I was showing them mm -hmm. jujitsu. And I remember telling them that it doesn't matter about size. You know, like right. the jujitsu. Yeah, school. exactly. It yeah. doesn't matter about size. That. If you know jujitsu, you can beat up big guys. And <laughs> so, when this incident happened. And this guy got out of the car. I mean, his aggression and his demeanor was so bad. Egan ran for the to call the police. So yeah, it was me and Guy yeah. there, and I saw the guy going at Guy, and I'm thinking, "Oh fuck!" I'm thinking to myself, "Well, I don't know if it's a good idea to fight with this guy, but I can't let that happen to Guy." Because like, yeah. like the guy said, the guy was huge, and the guy would just smash Guy. I'm like, "Fuck! Oh, I yeah. gotta do something," and I'm here. Thinking, I just told guide them that the, the size doesn't matter, so I can't. There's no <laughs> way I, I've got to get in between this shit, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when I stepped in between and he turned his aggression to me, I was like, "Holy fuck!" <laughs> now this is actually, you know, I felt like, "Well, shit is actually starting to happen now." Mm -hmm. You know, before it was a situation like, "Okay, we gotta just de deescalate." Yeah, just tell them mm -hmm. the cops are coming. Cool down, cool down. And then when I stepped in and I said, "Hey," Um, cool down. We're calling the cops. He, he said exactly that. He said, what the fuck are you going to do? And he started, he was pushing my chest. And I was like, that's what I thought, man. Holy fuck. It's, it's about to happen, man. And I, I remember thinking that this guy is so huge. I cannot let him start off. I remember thinking that if he comes, I think I stepped back once. And I think I remember telling myself, if he comes at me again, towards me again, I think I got to take the initiative because I think because he saw me step back and he saw how small we were, mm -hmm. I think he was really confident. Yeah. And that that helped his rage get a little bigger. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so fuck man. I just when he came forward, I just grabbed his head and, and flipped him to the ground. And I remember mounting him. Mm -hmm. I remember hitting him two or three times and he kind of looked fucking pissed when I hit him. <laughs> Shit. I was like, oh, you're supposed to knock out or turn your back. But he kind of goes pissed. <laughs> and so the next thing I remember is he grabbed my shirt, trying to throw me off. And he, dude, this guy was so strong. And I, because I supported my weight on him, he ripped my shirt. I wish wow. I, I still had that shirt, but he ripped the shirt. The shirt literally ripped. Mm -hmm. He turned his back and I sunk in the choke. And I don't know, what, how did you see it, guy? Well, I remember when, <clears throat> excuse me, as soon as you got, you flipped him. You know, you you mounted him fast. I mean, you were on top yeah. of him just like in an instant. So at that point, you know, your back was to me, and his feet were were uh, like close, like real, pretty close to me. I mean, I was probably within a foot. I mean, it's like it's not like the best seat at the UFC event. It's like you know, being inside the ring watching the fight. <laughs> you know, or, or, uh, yeah, yeah. Seriously, seriously. <laughs> and so, and, and Ensa starts starts throwing these these bombs. I remember with his right hand. Okay. And he could have instantly, so this guy's, you know, doing one of these, you know, so Ensign almost immediately could have got an R bar. And I remember talking to him about, uh, you know, later, because he, he actually told me later that, you know, this guy was so crazy, you know, just an R bar wasn't going to stop him. You know, he had to go, he had need to be choked out. So, um, and I remember thinking when this guy's feet, because, you know, when Ensign started hitting him, his feet were kind of flopping in the air. And I'm thinking, you know, from the one, you know, two or three or four or five uh, jujitsu lessons I had, I, you know, I knew an arm bar and a, like an ankle lock. So I'm like, should I grab this guy's ankle and like try to break his ankle or something? <laughs> you know, I, I mean, literally, I literally thought that, you know, and of course not knowing shit. And I thought, well, you know, when Ensign seems like he's got it, don't, don't get in the way, you know, don't fuck it, fuck it up for him. Mm -hmm. So Ensign starts, he's throwing these, these, these blows with his right hand. 
and he's wanting the guy to turn because i remember you told me later you wanted him to turn so you could get a deep a deep choke into him so when he's doing this and he's moving all he's kind of getting his elbows up getting the straight arms and so he finally there's nothing he can do and you could hear these hits on this guy's skull oh it was it was brutal this guy woke up you know with a bad hip from getting flipped you know he had a a, a you know a, a hurt head from all the blows and a really bad ego the next day i guarantee you yeah. you know because he's I'm sure, as big as this guy was i'm sure he was used to getting his way mm -hmm. so he's he's pounding with the right hand the guy finally ends up turning ensign's able to get a chokehold on him oh but that there's another part of that too i need to tell you so he does get the chokehold and actually ends up you know knock him out or choking him out so but before that Ensign, or egan saw what was going on so he's racing back across the street do you remember egan coming back over at all so and I remember because because when you were still throwing the, the blows and he started to turn, Egan was like down crouched and he had his arm just ready to hit this guy, you know. In, oh, in I didn't hit. see that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I swear to God that and I can you can ask Egan, but I remember Egan saying, kill him, Anson, fucking kill him. You remember <laughs> yeah, I remember that, him saying that. Yeah. I okay. Him yeah. That. So, yeah, he was Savage. he was he was there. I mean, I've seen some crazy shit with those two guys, but I'll tell you what, if the shit hit the fan, they were right there for each other. You know, mm -hmm. or a friend. So, you know, it's it's just. Uh, I mean, you saved my life that night. Yeah. That guy was wanting to hurt somebody. He was really wanting to hurt somebody. I remember, I remember when uh, I got the choke in. Mm -hmm. I remember thinking to myself, "Holy fuck!" Dude, I wonder if this jujitsu shit works, man. Because <laughs> I remember touching his his afro head and and because uh, and thinking like I'm choking him, and they said three seconds the guy passes out and thinking. For me, I was thinking I I. I I think I recall Egan telling me the whole fight took about 13 seconds. But yeah, well, I it felt it felt like fucking 13 seconds I had him in that choke. Right. And yeah. And I, I remember it was weird him in the choke. No, I was Go just ahead. gonna say it's, it's kind of weird because when you're in the heat of the moment, I mean time just kind of stops. It's like mm -hmm. you, you don't know if it's 13 seconds, 13 minutes, or 13 nanoseconds. I mean, you don't mm -hmm. know. You know, it's just kind of weird. So in your, yeah, in your thoughts me, just just fly through so fast. So so what happened next then, right? Like you, you choked him out well, and him, then well, yeah, I had like, him in the choke. I remember I, I remember we, we were started on the sidewalk and he was he was bucking and kicking. We actually ended up on the road. Okay. Yes. And right. I remember exactly. And I remember as I was thinking, like, fuck, is this guy gonna go to sleep? I remember him grabbing my arms and he started twitching. Mm. And when he was twitching, I yeah. knew he was out. So, you know, mm -hmm. it, usually in jiu-jitsu, we let him go and just, I mean, if a street fight, let him go and get out of there. Right. But I remember right there, I remember hearing Egan scream, kill him, hold him, kill him, kill him. Mm -hmm. And for me, it, it gave me like another rest of adrenaline. And, and I like, yeah, I was thinking to myself, yeah, fuck, I got to kill him. I got to kill him. So mm -hmm. after he passed out, I think I must say held him another five seconds, man. Fuck. I held him long. I held him long. And... What I remember after that is I we wanted after I let him go, he was limp and we wanted to get out of there. And I remember him right. being so fucking huge that I couldn't get him off of me. I think Egan had to mm -hmm. help pull him off of me. Right. Yeah. We got yeah, up this... and because we ran to check the signs, we ran back. I remember there was started running towards the car. And then think of that scenario. You got three guys running from a guy laying on the ground like he's dead. There was a mm -hmm. couple, I remember screaming. Come back yes. here. What are you doing? Come back right. here. Yeah. Right. Shit. And we're like, fuck this shit. We jumped in the car and fucking took off. Right. I remember right. that. The amount it took us to run to the car, get in the car, turn around. I turn around and look back before. We, I think there was a, a, interest, a highway right there. We yeah, could exactly. get right on the exactly. highway. Right. And I remember mm -hmm. looking back and the fucking guy was still out and had the couple uh, hovering over him. Right. So I'm yeah. thinking, fuck, I hope that guy didn't die, you know? Yeah, no, th there's no way. No, he's fine. Besides, we would have saw it in the papers the next day anyway. So yeah. So. No, no, so we yeah. did. We did actually check the papers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. Wow. So you don't I know what happened. Go back. I want to actually go back there one day, but I don't know exactly. Do you know where, where approximately it was in downtown Seattle? You know, I, I don't, but I tell you what, if I got a layout of uh, like a topological layout of the, of the city streets, I think I might be able to find it because though that – kind of that that merge or break off or whatever was so different with the highway being right there i, yeah, I might be able yeah, to find yeah, it yeah. you know so because yeah, i remember I think, also I think we could probably right find up to the highway there was it was going uphill too so 
Wouldn't, possible, wouldn't that be possible awesome possible if we go and wouldn't we would it awesome we go and visit that exact spot that it happened? Yeah, yeah, that'd be crazy. That would be fucking surreal yeah. for me to see that spot. Right, right. yeah, because that's kind of where it started for you, right? That's when you realize that hey, this this stuff works, you know. So, yeah, I was still I was still a, a fucking fresh white belt three months into jujitsu, right. man. Actually, right. I think that's how I got my blue belt. Oh, really? Okay. Or yeah, that was either how I got my blue belt or I got my purple belt. I remember I got my one of my belts because of that street fight. Wow. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. I think, yeah, I think you were still a white belt, I think. You know? Yeah, I, I think, think Egan was still, he was, I, I might have got my blue belt. Yeah, because you were, you know, Egan was really interested in it too and wanted to, you know, see if it if it actually worked. I think that that won him over too, big time. Yeah, probably. Big yeah, time. hooked Egan too, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So, that was knowing, you, knowing your luck, <clears throat> you'd go to Seattle and you probably bump into the guy and then we'll end up doing a podcast with this guy or something. Like, right. Yeah. That, because that this is exactly be... what happened with um, the, the guy, you know, the guy in Hawaii. I've forgotten his name now. I follow him on Instagram. What's his name? Fred. Um, Fred. Fred. That's it. Fred. Yeah. Yeah. Fred. Fred was good people. But yeah, I don't know if you saw it, Guy, but uh, we did a Yeah, a but I, I just I just have a funny <laughs> feeling this guy wouldn't take it that well. No, <laughs> Maybe no, no, no. He I wanted to be the kind of guy. Hey, what's up? How you guys doing? Bullshit. He <laughs> no, be, no. He'd be probably pulling on his gun and shit. <laughs> right. Be ready to get you one back. You know, and yeah. I don't know how it is in Hawaii now, but back then, you know, I think you know people kind of fought it out, and it's like, hey, okay, it's over. You know, the beef's done. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, yeah, he was not, not that type. Because, like I said, you know, he was a big dude, and he was used to pushing his weight around, and I'm sure he he got his way pretty much all the time. You know, so I guarantee he woke up the next day thinking, "What the fuck happened to me?" Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. He, you know, you know, he probably told his friends he mm-hmm. got jumped by three guys. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. You know, that's what happened. So <laughs> yeah, but the yeah. thing that killed me the most were, were the the couple that, that were there that they had like a little stroller. They were like pushing a little baby. This guy starts kind of like not running, but he's like going towards. It's like stop, get off of him. It's like I'm thinking, did you even see what happened? You know, this guy's, you know, trying to, to attack us and all of a sudden we're not supposed to defend ourselves or instant defend, you know, all of us, I guess. So you know. I'm guessing you never saw the girls again. <laughs> Just out of interest, no, right? no, that was no. <laughs> that next, last thing I remember was, you know, uh, as fast as I ran to that car, Usain Bolt was like way behind me, you know. <laughs> right. yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember driving down the highway with the front left light hanging off by two wires dangling down by the <laughs> I was driving down the street. Of course, That's what I don't remember. You know, trying to figure a way how I could take this car back and shove the light back in there so I don't get charged, a, you know, for a light. Because so, <laughs> it was a rental car, right? No. Yeah, really. it was a rental. It was a Lincoln. Yeah. Uh, Lincoln, whatever the big Lincoln was. And I tell you what, I've never ridden one since, and I've always hated those cars since that day. <laughs> hated them. <laughs> so, I was like, I would always dog, oh, those cars suck. They've got bad visibility, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah. you know. Well, you still love girls, girls, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, young and dumb. Wasn't that yeah, traumatizing then? A little old and dumb now, but you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that, that was, was crazy. crazy. That was mm-hmm. crazy. So, so uh, yeah. obviously, that's the the street fight in Seattle. You kind of alluded yeah. that there might be some other stories. There as was well, right? another one that that I would I would be still in the Pacific Ocean if it wasn't for instance. Wow, you remember okay. that? <laughs> He yeah, should have so, been here for this to do because he let you. He was going to let you drown. He was. He actually was. <laughs> yes, he was. Yeah, That's and I told that story before on on the tour, and he could just laughs, you know. So I know. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but it's it's kind of interesting because I used to go. I, you know, I'm from Kansas City. You know, mm-hmm. I'm on the Kansas side, and I used to go to to Hawaii and train with Egan and Ensign. You know, for playing playing on the right ball tour. So when I would stay with them, and I think Egan was getting into into diving, and they used to go night diving and actually spear fish. And actually, they were good at it. So and the fish was good. So so I go out with them, and and uh, you know I'm thinking, you know, it's just water. How hard can it be? It's no big deal, you know. So Kansas, there's no big body water in Kansas. You know, you might have a lake here and there, but that's about it. So so we get out in the ocean. I don't know how far we out how far we were out up from the from the shore. You went out of the boat pretty far out. Um, yeah, off, it, off it the, seemed far. Off the airport, a reef runway. So we're out. Right, a okay. lot of sharks out there too, yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. I'm glad you told me now and not then. So, <laughs> you know, but, 
<clears throat> so so I jump into water. So Egan starts handing me like a bag, a light, uh, a spear. And next thing I know, you know, I'm 140, between 140, 145 pounds, no, no fat at all. I just start sinking to the bottom. So I'm like, you know, I'm trying to get back up to the to the mm -hmm. surface and I just start throwing everything back into the into the uh, boat and just, you know, just swim around with the light. Yeah. So we're out there for I don't know. Could have been an hour, could have been 20 minutes. I don't know. So, you know, I see a light. I'm starting to like, you know, when it's it's nighttime, so it's dark and I don't think the moon was out. So because I couldn't find the boat. So and I was wasn't around anywhere where there was some reef where I could stand on. So and I was, you know, I've never been a very good swimmer. So I see a light, you know, so I'm like, okay, I'll swim over there. They can tell me where the boat is. So, so I get there, excuse me, it's, it's Egan. And I ask him, I'm like, Hey, where's the boat? You know, <laughs> he's like, shit, I don't know where the boat is. And I'm like, Holy shit. Okay. You know, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm like, can you take me back to the boat? Because man, I'm, I'm hurting, you know? And he's like, no, he's like, just swim regular. You know, so he wasn't going to take it back. And I'm, like, I'm like looking around. I'm looking for the shore. I'm like, fuck it. I'll just swim to the shore. If I die, I'll die. You know, so I'm swimming around trying to find the boat. <clears throat> see the see the other light, which was Ensign. So I swim over to him, you know, and I'm like tapping him on the shoulder. I'm just like, man, I'm hurt, man. I got to get back to the boat. He takes one look at me and he's like, oh, yeah, the boat's just right over here. Just, you know, you know, just hang on my shoulder, you know, just, you know, basically float and just put put your arm on my shoulder and I'll, I'll mm -hmm. swing you over there. So I finally get back to the boat. We get to, <clears throat> after it's all said and done, Ensign looks at me and he's like, you know, when you came up to me, I had no idea where the boat was, but I took one look at your face and it's like, you were done. <laughs> and I was, I started to panic. So I would have been, I would have totally been dead in the water. Damn, yeah, that's nuts. Nice. Nice. So, and, and, you know, and I'll tell you what, if Why? I could teach anybody anything, respect the ocean, man. Yeah. You know, you yeah, gotta yeah, respect yeah. the ocean. Yeah. So, and, and you know, I, I'll be honest, I, I didn't because I didn't know any better, you mm -hmm. know, so. We, we're in the water and then when you go night diving, you mm -hmm. literally can see just what your light shows. Right. Everything yeah. else mm -hmm. around you is pitch black. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, yeah. if you're not used to the water, it, it could be a real hairy thing. So <laughs> I remember yeah. hearing the splashing and the commotion. I remember Egan screaming at guys saying, just fucking swim. Yeah, yeah, shit. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's, I mean, we're from Hawaii, you know what I mean? It kind of seems real normal to just fucking swim, you know, but mm -hmm. Kansas, you're from Kansas City, you're probably not in the water a lot. No. Yeah, you know, no. Kansas City no, doesn't yeah. have much nice beaches, you know? No, no, not, not, uh, no, no oceanfront <coughs> property there. No. Uh, so when I, I heard, when I heard the commotion, I was, I actually headed towards Guy. Uh -huh. And then I saw him start swimming towards me. Yeah. And yeah, I, saw the light. I remember one look at guy was like, fuck, he, he was, he was already borderline panic state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I really oh, was. That's, that's, that's like, this it was, is that fucking, was, this that, is that serious, was a man. scary time. It was scary for me, you know? Yeah. So. And I was like, this is fucking serious, man. So yeah, I didn't, you know, we know the, the general direction of the boat from the lights on the land, but we don't know exactly mm. where the boat is. Right. So when, when he grabbed my shoulder, I knew, I knew he was in that borderline panic state and i didn't know you know like they say a lot of times when guys start panicking they start pulling the masks off the guy or start grabbing onto the guy so i didn't want that to happen mm -hmm. so i figured i'll just keep them as calm as possible pretending like i knew where the boat was i mean we, we found it pretty fast but i i mean i don't know if guy noticed but i would swim and i would look up i'll look around and come back down and swim look up and look around <laughs> to see if i could find no. the boat no, no, I think, yeah, boat, you did a very good job of getting me calm. That that helped a lot. That probably saved me right there. Yeah. I, so. Yeah, I thought because, that was. Yeah, no, I didn't know you were looking around because my head was down. I was dead. I was dead to the world. So I was just breathing through the snorkel. <laughs> you, know, you, know you know what the funny thing is on that? Is where we were. Egan didn't want to take him back to the boat because we're, we parked the boat and we're headed out across this big channel area where there's supposed right. to be a lot of fish. Mm -hmm. So I think we're almost halfway there and Egan didn't want to turn around. Right. So right. what happened was because I took guy back to the boat, I was, I wouldn't have enough time to make it back out there. So I decided to just dive around the boat. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, the, right. the funny thing with the universe caused when Egan came back empty, I got a lot of fish though. Ah, really? <laughs> yeah. That was fucking funny. Cause yeah. I was not yeah, supposed yeah. to the place where I was not supposed to have fish. <laughs> but apparently where Egan went, they, they, they didn't have any fish and I, I got a bunch of I think I got a parrot fish and I got a bunch of fishes there. 
Uh, so yeah, oh shit, I remember that guy, man. Yeah, Holy shit. yeah, that was that was a scary time. So yeah. you know, I mean, I'm dead serious when I say he saved my life twice. He he saved my life twice. Yeah. So because oh, you know, if I took that one, ocean hit from that was almost dude, 100%. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you probably wouldn't have been on this podcast right now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. You know. So I've got you to thank for that. I mean, if anybody owes a life debt, you know, it's I owe I owe two to. <laughs> And I, you know what? And he yeah, can pay I, one off. <laughs> Shit, I wish he get that one. This, this yeah, would have been even more epic if Egan was here on this one too, because he was in. Yeah, he was there at both instances. Right. Yeah. yeah. It'd be good to get his perspective too. You know. Yeah. So, because you know everybody sees it a little <laughs> bit birth, differently. You know, and it's that was thirty his years. His perspective ago. would have been exactly what we said. He would just say like. Fucking just, I don't, I don't know why you didn't just fucking swim, guy. <laughs> right, right, yeah. As I'm oh, basically shit. drowning when he's handing me all the stuff, you know, right out of the boat. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, But, yeah. hey, you know what? It's, I'm, I'm here to talk about it, so I'm thankful for that. So, Winston, yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> you <know>. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, I think that concludes oh, an episode when we, you know, finish up with your life being saved twice, right? So. Yeah. yeah, all right. <laughs> um but no I, I mean it's great to have you guy what, what what are you up to these days uh you know just working and you know ensign guess what man i'm i'm engaged to be married so no way. yeah yeah so Holy we don't shit. have a, we don't yeah we don't have a date set or anything but uh uh you you're know, engaged at though. our age where there's no rush you know mm -hmm. so yeah 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 oh shit, man yeah hey let me know ahead of time i'll try to get out there man yeah, if I can. Yeah, we were thinking maybe just the two of us, and then just like having you know a party. Oh, and, just you know, a, just a small home. tight one. Yeah, you know. Well, then so. we'll, we'll just have to meet in Hawaii or something. Or even yeah, exactly. They see that's what I would love to do because we were thinking maybe getting married like on a, on a cruise or something like that. Something, you know, just something the two of us, and then just you know go around and celebrate afterwards. You know. So yeah, we should. We'll need to come to Hawaii. You know, sometime you're there. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Let's time. Cool. Let's time that right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Ensign, any parting words before we wrap up this episode? No, um, well, what, what Guy just presented to me was this, this another story I haven't written in one of my books. So I've written book one. Book two is in the editing stages right now. I, I'm on the process of starting book three, and I'm always adding in these little stories. Like the, Fred, the story with Fred, the guy I got into a big fight with a long mm -hmm. time ago, I forgot that story, so I'm going to add that one. Right. This diving one is a pretty freaking crazy story to put yeah. in, too, man. So, yeah, you know, that 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 he added, guy just added another um, chapter in my book. So, yeah, but and yeah, it's uh, super cool, to, uh, today, so. guy. Awesome. It's super good to have you on, guy. And what we, we, man, we, it's always know, good to man, it's, it's, yeah. I so appreciate you guys inviting me to be on here. You know, it's always good to see you. So, yeah. how long did we, we? We think we lived together for about a year. Yeah, yeah, and in Texas, we, about a year. We toured about a couple of years together, or two or yeah, three two years. Or three. Yeah. Wait, well, how old were you when you stopped uh, touring? I have, I don't fuck rude. I don't know if it's the punches in the head, but I don't remember that. Right? Yeah, I, you know what? It, what you think about it, it's like thirty-five years ago, you know. Yeah. Well, so it's, it's but a I mean, time. there's definitely a lot of stories that we have. So I mean, yeah. we could probably have guy on again because when I remember, yeah. like, oh shit, we got to get guy back on this fucking story. Yeah, so we'll yeah. do that for sure, man. But yeah, awesome to yeah, see. Yeah, we had man. we've had a lot of fun, man. We have had a lot of fun. So all right, everybody. That rocky ball touring with you was like one of the, you know, one of those things that there's so many memories in my, with the girls and you know with the right. with the fights with the freaking shit we did at Six Flags and we went oh man so many things man <laughs> right yeah awesome all right everybody well I hope everyone likes and subscribes and uh, we'll speak to you guys again soon thanks everyone.